everyone and welcome to Cape Kowanda on the coastline of the fine state of Oregon in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. This is such a beautiful location, such a beautiful evening out here. This is um, about two hours uh, drive west of Portland out here on the coast and um, it's just absolutely perfect weather. It's like maybe 65 degrees it's sunny, it's warm, there's no humidity. I mean, you can see here that I'm wearing a, a, a fleece, you know, of all things, because it, you know, once the sun gets low, it does get kind of cold at night. Um, but really, really beautiful out here. So yeah, right now it's just basically uh, a little bit of a waiting game. I'm all set up right over here. As you can see, I've got my tripod and the camera and, you know, Everything's ready to go over here, and uh, I'm ready to start shooting. That's all great. What's not so great, and the thing that's really not working, is the light. As you can see over here, the, uh, the light, by the way, uh, or the sun, rather, is directly behind me, setting over the Pacific Ocean right now, and it is just blasting this rock formation that is uh, facing the uh, Pacific Ocean. And I mean, it is just being annihilated with light right now, which is, you know, if I was to expose for that, this is one of those classic problems with the limitation of dynamic range on uh, cameras. If I was to expose for this, um, you know, and try to get some detail out of that, it would mean that all of this, all of this shadow, this rock uh, that's framing it right here in the foreground, all of this would be completely dark. And I, you know, that can be cool and that could be nice if you want, you know, a high contrast image, if that's what you're going for. The problem though is that that's really not what I'm going for. And I'm, I'm really trying to create this, um, this composition that has some depth with a, a foreground and a midground and a background. And fortunately we have all three of those things here. And that's why I'm really hoping I'm going to be able to shoot this because we have this really great uh, rock face, you know, facing the Pacific Ocean here. And then further off in the distance back here is one of those uh, famous haystacks that you see along the coastline of Oregon. And then down here in the foreground, and I'll try to uh, illustrate it for you, we have this really nice um, kind of curvature of rock that is curving out and around this way. It, it kind of like juts out here to the left and so you have this motion that's going this way in the image and then you have the curvature of this rock formation over here that's going out that way and so you get this really nice energy where you know lines are kind of crisscrossing this way and going out that way or <laughs> let me try that again going this way and then out that uh, you know what I mean it's something like that um, Looking at the uh, mirror video image is just a little bit weird. But anyway, the point being is that, you know, not only do we have this, you know, great kind of window frame where you have, you know, the rocks on the left and on the right over here, but you have these great lines uh, providing some interest here in the foreground, the rock face here in the midground, the haystack in the back. Oh, and I'm just really hoping that the light participates because I think this can be a really 
good composition. I don't know if it's great, but I, I think it could be, you know, good at least. We shall see. So I'm really glad that uh, I decided to hike around a little bit and um, see what I could find by coming out this way. At first when I came out here, I just kind of went immediately out towards the rocks and I was uh, trying to get some photos of the haystack out there in the, in, the, uh, in the ocean. And that worked out okay, but then I decided to come back this way. And it was when I came back and I started looking around that I realized that there was this really nice canopy of trees here and it's probably a little bit dark and you can't really quite see them right now but there are these kind of twisty gnarly trees that are you know right down here towards the edge of the water and i came back here in the trees because one of the things i always you know try to look for is you know something of interest in a foreground or something i can shoot through in order to make a background more interesting and i started exploring back here and i'm so glad that i did because as you can see, I found this uh, rather nice composition, I think. This is one of those classic kind of like frame within a frame types of uh, things where sometimes you, when you're taking a photo of, of an element, you try to find some type of uh, framing device around it, you know, whether it's, you know, shooting through a window or shooting through some kind of opening, something that is kind of like a picture within a picture, if that makes sense. And it's just one of the, you know, kind of like uh, compositional tricks that you can sometimes use to get uh, an interesting photo. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I'm hoping it works this time because I feel like I found a really nice frame here. There are these branches coming out of this tree that's uh, directly to my side here. And all of them are arcing down towards the ground. And you have these branches on the left and branches on the right. And it just so happens that right in between these two really thick branches are all these, you know, just really nice cluster of, uh, you know, pine needles down this way. And then in between them out here, uh, it's kind of hard to frame it just right here for the video. But then, you know, in between the branches here, you can see out there in the distance is the haystack. So what I'm trying to do is it's been a real challenge, honestly, getting the tripod into just the right place. And I still don't know if I have it in quite the right place, but this is always a challenge where you're, you know, you have a kind of like all these things coming in from the edge of the frame and you're trying to compose it in such a way so that none of the branches are touching the haystack or getting too close to it. And you want the haystack to be, you know, in just the right place in between these branches. And so I'm having to, you know, like raise the tripod, lower it, move it a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. I'm just kind of like, oh my God, I'm just kind of like just gently nudging it, you know, one direction or another, trying to get it into just the right place. And it's a little bit tricky. It's also a little bit tricky because uh, from a just purely dynamic range perspective, it's really dark back here in the trees. And so all of this around me here is dark and all of the light is out there in the water. So when composing this, what I'm trying to do is um, I'm focusing more here towards the, fo the foreground and um, closing down the aperture and, and hoping that I get some sufficient depth of field so that the back is in focus and the front is in focus too. I might do some focus stacking just to be on the safe side and you know where you know you take an image where you know it's in focus you know towards the foreground and then another in the background and then you blend them together. That's one way to solve the focus problem. Um, I think I might do that just to be on the safe side but the other thing I'm doing is is that I'm bracketing my exposures too and I usually don't really like shooting uh, in HDR too much because it's kind of a pain but I, um, in situations like these, you kind of have to, where you have just, it's just too much dynamic range for the camera to adequately uh, deliver in a single photo. So you have to create three different ones and then blend them together. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here, you know, capturing, you know, one that's like a mid range, one that's like a stop under in order to expose for the, uh, the haystack and the water and the light in the back in the sky. And then one that's one stop over for here in the foreground. And then I'll be blending these. And then, <laughs> hopefully, after all that, I'll get an image that's, uh, that's worth looking at and uh, is uh, decent enough to share. So 
We shall see. I'm gonna give this a shot and um, let's see how it goes. So I think it's going to do it for Cape Kowanda. Uh, this was a really beautiful evening out here. Once the sun actually got down below the horizon, it just turned the most beautiful tones of blue and purple and pink. And it was just really fantastic light. It was really quite beautiful. As you can see, it's getting really quite dark now. And, uh, you can kind of barely see me at this point. Just trying to squeeze in a few last photos back here at the first spot where I was taking photos earlier. Still trying to figure this composition out. This thing is so hard because the way that these elements line up in front of one another, these, um, the way these rocks kind of jut out, there's not quite just the right angle where you're able to get that sufficient depth of seeing you know, the mid-ground and then the background and then the background further on behind that they all kind of get lumped together no matter what angle you pick um and that's that's obviously a little frustrating so i've been shooting low shooting high trying to get it you know from all these different angles and um and i just never seem to get it quite right but um still taking photos still trying to get something out of the scene because i just really really love this uh, particular composition here so hopefully it's worth the effort you never know sometimes you get back and you look at photos and you're like why did i spend so much time on that <laughs> on that one composition um because there was something about it when you were in the field and shooting it that you could see and you're just working and working and trying to get it and sometimes it comes together and honestly sometimes it doesn't i'm crossing fingers and hoping this is one of those cases where I'm able to pull something out of the photo later after I'm able to um, take a look at it. Anyway, thanks for being here for another one of these uh, travel vlog videos. I appreciate your time, your attention, and your interest, of course. If you'd like to follow along and um, be notified of future videos and all that good stuff, Hit the, hit, the, hit the subscribe button below and uh, be sure to give the video a thumbs up too. So that's it for Oregon. Thanks for being here. See you next time.